Hi guys, welcome to another session of learning with Quant Analysis Analysis Diary. My name is Arjit and today we'll talk about technical breakouts. For those who already have some knowledge on technical analysis basics, uh, you are good to go here. But if you are an absolute beginner, I would suggest to check out our technical analysis for absolute beginner video first before uh, watching this video. So, in the previous session, I talked about basics of price actions. So, there was demand, supply, and there was support and resistance, and then how price moves in between them. So, we'll continue further uh, learning on this. So, today is the very first topic is trend. What are trends? So, trends can be uptrend, downtrend, and sideways or range bound. In general, a trending or directional trend a trending market or a directional market refers to either up trend or down trend so opposite to that is sideways or range bound market a breakout refers to a change in immediate previous trend in a broader view However, in this session, we will cover only some of these here and focus learning on basic up breakout first. Though I have referred this session as technical breakout, in much more linguistic way, breakdowns are also covered as part of breakouts in general. So, we, are, we may not use the word bre breakdowns always. We can't... Uh, more casually the word breakout is used so in previous sessions we also spoke about price rejection and acceptance so price rejection around supply or demand zone or support and resistance levels or the price gives gets acceptance and continue moving towards the direction directions a breakout comes when a price is accepted above or below this particular levels like support or resistance or a demand or supply. So this conceptually the breakout gives you much more a broader view to the breakout concept of breakouts right. So we previously seen that demand supply support resistance are there but price may cross those lines cross those levels and go up and continue going down as well so that we can refer as a breakout in a broader sense breakout can also refer to some of the swing patterns so this is something i mentioned very briefly in previous sessions the Apart from there could be a trend line, there could be demand supply or support resistance breakout, there could be a swing pattern breakout, there could be a trend line break breakout. So trend line and swing pattern we briefly introduced in the previous session just for the sake of understanding the breakout in this session. Okay, so first uh, we'll give a little bit a deeper view in the trends. So, how do you identify it's a uptrend or it's a downtrend or is it a range bound? Which one of these is actually in current market? So, in uptrend, there will always be higher high and higher low. So, Let's jump into a chart and see here. 
I will mark the levels here, here and here. So if you see this, I have marked the lows of this particular portion. So here the low is here and then this side the low is here and then low mid is here and here is another low and this. So these all are low but this low, this low is higher than this previous low and this low is higher than the previous low. So this can be called, uh, this is a higher low, this is another higher low, this is another higher low and this is higher low. So that is one of the conditions, it should form a higher low. Second condition, so here is a high and this high is higher than this high. So this is a higher high and this high is another higher high and this high is another higher high. So if you see price has been consistently making higher lows and higher highs, higher low and higher highs. So this can be called as the price is in uptrend. Similarly, a price making a lower low or lower high, then it can be called as a downtrend. Now let's check any downtrend stock. So let's look for this script called Excite Industries. And if you see here, the price has been from, if you see from here, the price has been, th there was a high and the next high was a lower high, LH. So it's a lower high and then followed by, so there was one low which was previously made here and then this low is lower than this low. So from here to here there is a higher there is a lower high formed here so this is a lower high this is a lower low then price came down again and made a low here so this will be lower low and this will be lower high. So when price continuously making a lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, that is said to be in a downtrend. So in here you can say this is consistently making a lower high and price started falling here. So you can confirm that at this point price is in downtrend or even in here price break the lower low from the lower high. It's coming here. It's still in the downtrend. So I, I hope that it cleared that lower high and higher low and higher high and lower low, this four thing. Okay, so if you see this, uh, I presented the higher high is more important and lower low with more importance as a bigger and highlighted in this. That's because this is one of the most important part of the trend. So if a trend is bearish then irrespective of the high whether it's a lower high made or not there should be a lower low made so in a downtrend there should be always a new low a lower low so that is the most important part of the trend and together with lower high just give more confirmation the trend is strongly in downtrend similarly for uptrend So in a uptrend, what is important is price is making new high. So as, as long as price is making new high or the higher high, so then the uptrend can still be intact. Let's look something, let's go back to our excite chart once more. Okay, so now going back to this current 
portion let's say price has been 145 was the low that was made and if we see there was one high was made around here 157 then there was another high is made in 159 then another high is made around 162 at the same time a low is made around here and then low made here in the high so as long as this lower high is protected and higher high is made the price can be called it started an uptrend from here so price came down to here and then it not break the lower low from here so this is your lower low and this is a higher low as lower low it did not make a fresh lower low and this is again another higher low so as long as price is making new high and the high lows are consistently upward it can be called in uptrend so here from here it has a good potential of starting a new uptrend and hasn't moved a lot okay second so this is one way of checking a trend whether it's a uptrend or downtrend now second thing is there's another way to check trend if you if you're thinking it's a whether it's a uptrend or not if you make a trend line following connecting all the higher lows in a trend if it makes a upward directional line it is in uptrend so if this line become like this then it can be called it's going in uptrend similarly when price is going down so so when is price is going down if you connect the lower highs the highs that were made previously if you connect them if the price continuously trade below that line it will be called it is in downtrend so from here to here the price is in downtrend uh, let's use this So from this arrow to this arrow, this two arrow, this is a downtrend and from here and to this arrow, from this arrow to this arrow, this is in a small uptrend which does not, which hasn't make any bigger high. So the strength of the trend which I'm not going to cover in this session but it's something worth mentioning even if you do when you are drawing the trend line in a lower trend if the line is much more steeper then the momentum and the strength of the trend is very strong so line is like this that moment the trend is very strong when line is less slopey and more aligned to near to horizontal that is weak trend so the trend line itself can denote whether that how much trend is there so if I connect this to it will become this so it's a slow uptrend here okay so two uh, so I mentioned in the trend the trend could be three types it could be uptrend it could be downtrend or it could be a range bound trend so what is a range bound trend let's uh, open up another stock let's say ICIC bank and what I will do is I will connect this and I will connect 
around this so I have drawn a resistance line I have drawn a support line so how to draw resistance line support line we discussed already in the previous session if you haven't if you don't know yet how to make a support line and resistance line please refer to the other video that we shared earlier okay now I was talking about low right so this is a low and this is a high here the low is is a higher low compared to previous low second low what will be the second low this is not a lower low so this is not a lower low not a higher low this is basically same low okay and here the high was there and this high is basically same high so if price is not making any lower low or higher high again two important higher high and lower low when price is not making any of this there is no higher high there is no lower low in that case price can be said to be consolidating in a range or the trend is sideways or the trend is range bound so how to know that trend is range bound when there is no no lower low or or and there is no higher high okay so what happens if the price was made a higher low or lower high it doesn't matter because there is no lower low nor there is no higher high so these two things main importance of deciding part of the trend okay so that's about trend now let's talk more about breakout so we spoke about so far in today's session we spoke about trend and lower low higher low and we also spoke about support resistance and demand supply in previous session so now we'll learn about breakouts so breakout there are different types of breakout so here I mentioned higher high and lower low so there if price breaks below this low then it could be when it makes a fresh low, lower low so if price comes down around here let's say let's say price is coming from here to here so this will be a lower low if that is made then it will be called it's a breakout happened downside from here or we can more precisely say in a linguistical way that there is a breakdown below this support so that's a break or since this is a support line we can say if price comes below this that's a breakdown or lower side breakout from the support similarly if price goes above here 380 the price go above 380 then it will make higher high so it can be called it's making a giving a breakout or it's it's, it's a resistance line right so it's above resistance line if when you're crossing the resistance line it's called a breakout from the resistance breakout can also happen in trend lines or swing patterns okay so for this we'll use this chart only but I'll go to a different time frame so remember that price was in downtrend I mentioned earlier and then you can connect the lower highs in a trend line and this will give you that confirmation price is in downtrend but when the trend line price goes above this trend line it called a trend line breakout and this gives a chance of reversal trade also 
so if it's a it, it in lower trend if in a down trend price gives a breakout above the upper trend line a chance of reversal is there so that is trend line breakout and the trend line back on this is upside breakout let's give an example of downside breakout wait this next portion of the chart also we can say here the price so price gave a breakout here right so trend has changed from there and price is making higher low higher low so we'll connect the higher lows make a trend line so from here to here price went up trend after the breakout and then here again price given a breakdown or breakout in the lower side so this is where price give a breakout in the lower side below the lower trend line in a up trend so in a up trend you are drawing the lower trend line in a down trend you are drawing the up trend line and when the trend line is breakout it giving a reversal of the trend from the trend swing patterns so i'll not be able to cover all the swing patterns um but the thing is that uh, i have couple of photos that is already opened from google so these are called swing patterns so when price is consolidating in this pattern where price is making lower highs and higher lows symmetrically it can make a symmetrical triangle or a symmetrical wedge kind of pattern so the pattern are called basically by how it looks like so wedge you know how it looks like a triangle how does it look like so there are such let's see if there is anything Let's I connect the higher lows and higher high. Uh, okay, so let's connect till this part. So this is an wedge pattern where it has a broader starts start with a broader trend and then slowly narrow down. So this is a wedge pattern and this there is a trend line is going up. Both trend line is going up. So it's an ascending wedge. pattern so in ascending wedge while price is still inside the wedge it's in uptrend but if price given a breakdown below the wedge so when price will give if there is any breakdown below the wedge then price will come in downtrend so if you see here the price went above the upper trend line the momentum was so strong and then it came down and then start going up again so this trend line become invalidated here so you will need to form another trend line from here which covers this this trend line. so this is one of example of swing patterns similarly the like wedge there could be triangle there are head and shoulder there is pennant there is bull uh flag pole pattern so these patterns are called swing patterns let's see if we can find some patterns currently i was checking something here now let's go to magnitude this one we checked yes today only I'll go to hourly frame, and okay. So in hourly frame, if I draw the support line here, and then I draw another resistance line here, let's say in coming days price.
so this is not a full pattern yet but let's say if I assume the price comes down here then if you see it here then price goes this price come down price went up above this line and then came down and tasted this line and came down so this is one of the swing pattern that can form which is called head and shoulder okay so head and shoulder will have a head in the middle which is higher than the both shoulder and both the shoulder is generally near to the same level so this peak and this peak has to be same level okay and this has to be higher than this two this two and price has to complete the pattern to to complete this full pattern if you see this price has to come down here price has to come down here and then break down or break out below this support line to have a confirmations so basically if price comes from here to here which is below support line that will be for successful formation of head and shoulder swing pattern and this will be a break a successful breakout from that swing pattern and it will trigger it will give you a sell signal similarly there is inverted head and shoulder which is exactly opposite to heads uh, exactly like head and shoulder except it's like uh, top down so head is in bottom side and shoulder is in here so these are called swing patterns so breakout from these patterns can also refer to a breakout or breakdowns swing patterns will probably cover in a separate session because there are so many swing patterns we cannot cover in one sessions with other now the main important part of the learning basics of breakout how to trade a breakout so a breakout will be in total five stage of trade so first stage of trading your breakout will be planning so you will plan before the breakout happens let's say if this was the case for breakout so for my plan will be if price comes below so I'll see yeah this price has to come here then I'll take the trade so that's my planning planning part second planning part there will be some other things like how much if the price comes down here how much stop loss I should keep how much risk reward is there so swing pattern has a specific target line for example head and shoulder usually have a target of this peak of the head to that neckline so 21,000 this is called the neckline so that this height this depth will be the target after the breakout so from here to exactly that much point is your reward potential so if that is the reward potential how much stop loss so there is a said stop loss to be in this shoulder the latest shoulder whatever high was made this will be stop loss and this will be your entry and reward is the depth of this so each of the swing pattern has already a predefined set of stop loss target but you need to remember when you are trading you should not take a bigger risk and always maintain your maintain your positions and total risk size so ideally in general where we suggest that keep 2% of your total capital or less than that as your stop loss now the depending on the type of trade you are taking either in the future or options or individual bank script or bank B whatever type of trade you are taking depending on that your stop loss will be variable so with the ultimate stop loss with this okay let's go to much more simpler one we are checking so let's give an example of trend line breakout in an hourly chart of its side 
and at the same time okay so what else we should once you have done your risk reward planning your how much stop loss you should keep and how much target you should keep you already planned and you think that you know that potential of the breakout is a good for you and that risk reward is favorable to you then you will go to the next stage you will wait for a confirmation so confirmations may come from different so one way to confirm a breakout or when i am talking breakout again it could also mean breakdown i am talking in general in more casual sense so be it actual breakout on the upside or breakdown in the downside in both cases you can confirm with volume so if the volume is good amount of volume while the doing the breakout or post breakout or pre breakout or just near to the breakout basically let's say around here if the volume is good in around here so this candle was a breakout candle right so the price went above this trend line in this candle so if volume is very good in this zone or specifically it is better if the volume is good in the breakout candle itself so that's you can take as a confirmation so that's so one popular way of taking confirmation or you can take confirmation from other type of indicators or analysis so for example of one when i'm doing this breakout i'll see there is a sudden a type of change in option chain which is giving me a confirming this breakout will be sustained so which means that there are times when breakout happens it can fail and it may come down also okay so you will need to take either volume or alternate indicator or alternate type of analysis together with breakout to get a confirmations so second step step is confirmation after planning so once you have the confirmation then you will need to do entry so at the confirmation time it's your point you already made a decisions your entry typically will be based on the breakout candle closing price majorly so if this is the closing here you are going to buy this around here so this is your entry if this is your entry the stop loss could be so the next step is keeping your stop loss when you are doing entry right so i mentioned you have to keep a part trade top stop loss of 2% but apart from that there is technical stop loss right so this is a you can call it higher low so this previous higher low was around here okay so after this low the previous higher low so this is your ultimate stop loss for this breakout so your stop loss will never be far below this so somewhere around this can be your last stop loss so let's slightly below this spike this 152 could be your absolute stop loss okay but there could be scenario where absolute stop loss and your entry this difference the risk 156 minus 150 so 4 rupees risk if it becomes more than your 2% capital so you will look for a stop loss which is higher than the absolute stop loss so another obvious stop loss could be used as the low of the breakout candle so this could be an alternative higher stop loss so your breakout candle low is your alternative stop loss depending on your part trade capital and part trade how much stop loss you can afford so this is your alternative stop loss this is the absolute stop loss if if you feel this stop loss is still 
above two percent of your risk then you should be keeping two percent as the maximum stop loss if that comes around here or here it doesn't matter so that is that is your maximum stop loss so depending on your part rate stop loss you are deciding that stop loss will be decided for this but there is few options as i told you here you can choose between the stop loss so obviously when you are choosing the stop loss there that will have alternate effect if you if i choose a stop loss here let's say if i do make make say it alternate stop loss 2 so this stop if the price is going in much more volatile state then there, there will be chance that price may hit this stop loss then start it continuing upward again or it come down to this stop loss and then price may continue upward again so obviously what stop loss you are keeping that will be impacting what are the chances of getting the stop loss hit so absolute stop loss if it gets hit and then price goes up then you can't do anything so that case is above your control but alternate stop loss can get hit early so basically these stop loss is hit and you can still continue to hold if this is within 2% of stop loss but if price comes down below this line in no scenario will be holding this in breakout entry and stop loss is decided then it comes to trade management so once you are inside the trade you need to manage your trade so just before i go to the trade management there is one more thing i'll say after breakout there is something some move may come which is slight down and it may retrace the breakout level again so price may after giving initial breakout price may come down a little and test this breakout line so in this case is a trend line breakout so a price may come to this line see here price came near this level a breakout and then price started going up again so that's an alternative entry to the entry i mentioned before so you are either taking based on the closing price of this or you are taking in a retracement where it comes testing the breakout this is another very good example I'll give and which is something we did analysis in the past as well. As I'll go daily time frame and I'll go here. Around this time Nifty Fifty index see the breakout candle was much higher here. It was not like slightly above it. So breakout happened from a demand uh, supply zone here which was in this time frame there this particular zone was acting as a supply zone and then on this candle price went above the supply zone and closed above so this gave a breakout from the supply zone however since the closing price was quite uh, far from the breakout if you are waiting for closing price you will miss the move so in this case your choice is since it's a daily time frame take a confirmation in lower time frame and make an entry based on the closing price of lower time frame okay so we can see that hourly closing happened around here and then price continue moving here so that's that's your alternate choice that you can uh, get an entry in lower time frame in case price has a good momentum above the breakout level so from here if price is going in good momentum you can take the trade in a lower time frame now there is another alternative entry I mentioned that price may come retest the support or the breakout again. So in this case the major breakout was from the supply even though there is a trend line even though there is a horizontal line the major breakout was from a zone above supply zone. So after price going up it again slowly came down and tasted this. 
so after price is this red candle form and then this green candle form this gives you another entry so your next entry if you miss this breakout your next entry after it successfully tasted the breakout and then started going up again so this close price is is your next entry so this candle is your next entry oh come on so once price tested and then this candle anywhere between this and this you can make an another entry okay so let's say you have entered around here and you can see it continued upward so this is an alternative entry to what i already discussed so based on successful retest you can also enter in breakout now going for trade management okay fine so you already entered in here but then where do you exit so based on the pattern you might have a different different target so initially this supply or demand whatever happening in this zone was a depth of 10 382 approximately 400 points so my initial target of this breakout will be 400 points so also this coincidentally matches with the previous high so if i entered here my initial target will be this and my stop loss will be this low this tested low in this case so again as you can see the low will be depending on the uh, the stop loss can depend on the pattern as well as the amount of part trade stop loss you can afford so in this case i'll keep a stop loss here and enter around here 11 to 70 and then when comes around here i'll that is my initial target so once the initial target is reached what can i do i can partially book profit half of my positions and then shift the stop loss from here to my entry that is cost to cost or in this case i might go a little above my cost so around here so i book half here and then shift my stop loss here so this is one way of managing your trade so you booking partially here and then doing this then you see that price is going sideways from here and even it break came down a little low but it did not hit your stop loss here your cost to cost now you see in this candle price went a uh, broke the high it may give a it may have given a fresh breakout so in this case you will see this measurement and then your next target will be based on the previous measurement so you will shift your target to approximately based on this so 450 point so approximately this is where your next target will be now if you see this structurally market has another levels around here right so after moving this much and then that equal amount of target it came around here so this is your second target and in this case you will shift your stop loss again to the previous target zone so your stop loss will come down to here and your second target will be here so at this point you can either go for full booking or you can again go for partial booking with a stop loss so it's up to you so this will continue until your stop loss get hit or you decide to book full profit here so i don't have enough time to discuss the entire trading management because this will con there will be other topics as well because this is one way of managing your trade and then exiting and booking profit based on the swing pattern based on the previous pattern and trend 
or the market structure your targets may vary from case to case scenario but there is one generic way to also manage your trade so that is using a trend line you can also connect this trend line between the two swing and then hold the trade until your trend line it comes below the trend line here so you can book profit here and hold from after buying from here you can book profit around here basically one move so that is another way of doing it managing your trade and booking your profit so in this manner we mention that the, there is something called moving average as an indicator where you can use a moving average as a dynamic support line here as well and let's say if i use so i can see it's a 50 day moving average i am using so i can hold along the moving average and until the price comes below this moving average i'll hold it so around this is not here closed so in here price closed below the moving average so i'll exit around here so this is opened below moving average but closed above so this is not exit the right exit is here when closed below moving average so from here to you will be holding till here that's another way of managing and holding trades so that's how long you can hold your trades this will continue further on a session which is specifically will be on trade management how to do it because this is a vast topic and we don't have enough time to cover that today so i hope this gives a basics idea about the part one of technical breakout so this gives you how to entry how to keep stop loss and how to manage your state a little and how to identify the breakouts from the chart we will continue more about breakout in as another sessions oh, in overall while the breakouts are quite useful strategy for trading it will be better if you read more in details about it in alternative source or try to understand it based on your practice so practice do your own charting draw your own chart find out the breakout and see if you are able to find them successfully if it's a valid breakout or it's invalid breakout those kind of points keep a note down that will help you also in learning do like and subscribe to our channel for more such contents and we'll continue in the next sessions again thank you and take care